favorite traders welcome out to secondary offerings today we're going to detail what they are how they work and how you might take advantage of them uh, it might not sound like a very interesting topic but it's probably the only place i can think of right off hand where you could put on a position that has a profit right from the get-go or maybe even a zero risk trade right from the start and those things kind of seem too good to be true but secondary offerings are maybe the only way that's possible where you can start a position with zero risk and that in and of itself is worth learning about so let's go through secondary offerings what they are and how they work first of all when a company goes public in its IPO that's the initial public offering anytime they sell stock after the IPO date it's now called a secondary offering it is a selling of shares so a company will have a certain amount of shares outstanding let's say it's 1 million shares now that's not very many a lot of corporations have billions of shares outstanding but let's say there's a million shares there's a couple of ways that they can do open market operations to increase or decrease share count a secondary offering would increase the share count it would take it from 1 million to maybe 1.1 now the first question we would ask is is that a good thing well to existing shareholders it's sort of a bad thing because now there are more shareholders this is dilutive my share count the amount of ownership that I have of the corporation has gone down because they've brought in more shareholders now those shareholders don't get shares for free right they had to pay cash so the company collects the cash but now we got a smaller piece of the pie our slice of the corporation has now been diluted down right because of the secondary offering if they did a stock buyback program stock buybacks are anti-dilutive basically they take the share count down so in a stock buyback they would buy shares out of the market the share count would go from 1 million to 900,000 or what have you over time and this would be a positive because now my ownership stake is larger over here it's sort of a negative because now I own less of the corporation right and so secondary offering good or bad I would say for most secondary offerings you're gonna see stock prices that go like this it's not really a great sign why is the company doing a secondary first of all we need to ask what their motivation is number one they need cash they have to have more cash to survive to get through to build out now I'm sure they've got great explanations that hey this will allow us to do this and that and build you know more plants or whatever it may be but they need the cash from somewhere the second question is well why not do a bond offering in a bond offering you just have to pay the money back with interest isn't that better than giving up upside right when we sell equity because the corporation is selling equity now we've got all these other shareholders now the reason might be that the bond market's too expensive the company's risky uh, the amount of interest they would have to pay on the bonds is just too high they can't justify that and so on so maybe the bond market's just not really available to them and they're kind of forced to sell equity selling equity though is not as good in that you're giving away upside you don't see Warren Buffett wanting to go sell some of his ownership in Berkshire Hathaway right he wants as many shares and as much ownership as possible if they need money they tap into the bond market or whatever um, even better than that would be using profits to fund their operations but you can understand why a lot of newer companies look they don't have a ton of profit they're trying to grow they need cash the bond markets not available they would have to pay way extreme interest rates and so on they have to sell equity and they have to sell shares so that a lot of times leads to this now not always Tesla is a stock that for many years did secondary offerings and that stock price was a rocket ship for years that stock was just exploding higher they would have their downturns they would do some different things 
but they're they're the rare example. I would say they're the more the exception than the rule where they just kept going higher and higher and higher. Now, the stock price action leading up to the secondary offering can kind of be uh, informative. If the stock price has been going up and they're doing a secondary offering, you might look at it as kind of a positive. Hey, things are going well, but we feel like we can use more cash. Um, we've got more opportunity for Tesla. They could build more charging stations, whatever they needed the capital for, and the business was going well. When a stock is plummeting, and there was a stock that I highlighted for months in the market roundups as a short idea. This was Virgin Galactic. Virgin Galactic was one of these corporations that were going to take it to the moon or whatever, you know. And this company was trading at an extreme valuation, way overpriced. And even as the stock price was plummeting, the company was doing secondary offering after secondary offering. What does that tell you? Well, if they're selling stock, even while it's plummeting to build cash, they might still think it's overvalued if you think about it, right? If they thought the stock was way undervalued, they probably wouldn't be selling more shares. Who in their right mind? Imagine you just own your own company. Would you want to sell your, your company when it's down in the dumps and the price is really low? No, you'd want as high a price as possible and you might be willing to sell part ownership in your company when times are good just from like a diversification standpoint. But if you're selling off parts of your business even while it's plummeting, that's a little different equation, isn't it? It kind of speaks to we're not super optimistic even while we're plummeting. We need the cash so bad, we're still willing to sell more and more shares of the company even while it's in a massive decline. So it was part of my thesis for why I was shorting SPCE playing it through the options market bearishly and so on for quite some time that the story itself tells something right if we think our stock is fairly valued we might be willing to trade some new shareholders coming in for this cash for the business opportunities when the stocks in a free fall and you're still willing to make that trade there's probably more room to go so pay attention to the stock chart leading up to a secondary offering that whole picture tells a story now how does a secondary offering work well basically if you're set up for it you can get notified I have an account with Fidelity and you would have to just do this on your own but I get notifications for IPOs and secondary offerings they usually put the category as IPO even though it's not always an, an IPO when you click on it it'll come in and tell you details here we can see a corporation that's in the healthcare space, how many shares they're looking to sell, what they expect the pricing to be. There you go. This is a secondary offering. This was expected to close yesterday, actually, it just so happens, after the close yesterday. Today is January 5th. This was January 4th. Indication of interest, you'd have had to tell them um, yesterday basically by 4 p.m. that you were interested and your allocation understand this is where secondary offerings are good for you potentially as a trader slash investor they have to sell below market prices they're not gonna attract you at current market prices so look at uh, biote I don't know how you say it okay it priced yesterday now you can see how the stock is plummeting and they're still doing the secondary. But even though they, they had priced, they hoped they could get $4, this thing was pricing at $3 or something. Okay, Yesterday it closed at maybe $3.15 per share. Why do they have to sell shares below market price? Well, because nobody will pay market price or higher. Nobody will pay it. Why would I? If I can buy the market if the stock in the open market at 315 you're not going to convince me to pay 350 in a secondary no thank you so secondaries price below market they have to, to to you know acquire interest now we could maybe google 
where this stock ended up pricing. Let me pull up Google and just see um, if we can see where this secondary priced. So if I go to Google, where did Biote secondary offering price? Oh, this is on my other screen. Sorry, let me bring it over here. And let's just see. Okay, so here you go. They priced the secondary at $3 per share. You can see it right there. Below, and this is usually how it works, below where it closed. So the allocation of that, if you said I want an allocation and you know I'm not willing to pay more than such and such, if you said I want to pay $280, you didn't get an allocation. But if you were willing to pay $3, you got an allocation to this. Now, the stock gapped down, as you can see, to 3 bucks. So it kind of wiped out that, that value differential right out of the open. That doesn't always happen, but in this case it did. And then it traded down right off the bat. You can see it's a larger volume day than normal, and that's very common. A lot of people are trying to flip this secondary or do things like that. Now, the brokerages will frown on that. If you try to flip your IPO, if you try to flip your secondaries, they will basically stop allowing you to participate in them. So they want you to hold for at least 30 days and so on. And if you, if you do that too many times where you flip out of them quickly, they'll actually stop allowing you to participate. But in this particular case, you were buying at a discount. You were getting shares at 3 where it had closed at 315 the prior day. Anybody can participate, existing shareholders, new shareholders, what have you. But this is very kind of commonplace for how these work. When companies are doing secondaries, even when their stock price has been suffering, it's not a, a real great sign. It's not a vote of confidence. It's the company saying, we really need capital. And even though the stock's going down, we think we still need to trade it in and bring on more shareholders because we need this cash so badly. So where does the stock trade from here? Hard to say. Uh, it can trade anywhere, but that $3 mark becomes a key level for the stock. In essence, if it can trade above the secondary, great. If it doesn't maintain above the $3, a lot of these people will flip out of the position and you'll see big volume spikes and you know they'll be out within a day or two and you know oftentimes the stock can kind of keep moving on its path to the downside so it's a it's a little bit tricky that way now this one there wasn't a free profit imagine that it opened at 315 and you got your allocation at 3 you're up 15 cents right out of the gate right so theoretically you could have bought that stock and never had a loss but it's it's not a free it's not that there's no risk going forward. It's just, you know, you could potentially buy at a discount and not see the stock trade down to that price. I would say they often do, but not always. Um, there are some circumstances where a secondary offering, you get your allocation, the stock stays above that, kind of trades higher, and you were never even at break even. You were profitable from day one right out of the gates, which is kind of a fun thing. Again, not really possible when you're buying markets in the open market because you're buying at current prices. And since you're buying at current prices, you're literally break even the moment you start here. The moment you start, you could already be profitable. So that's kind of an interesting dynamic. Next, there are the possibilities for some form of arbitrage or things like that. Um, the company would have to trade options. So SPCE was a great example of this. You know, I highlighted this so many times, and this was probably a couple of years ago was when the stock was in the 20s and so on. But I highlighted this during this period of time over and over again as a short candidate. And part of that was the secondary offerings the fact that they kept doing them as the stock was plummeting and so on. And it was the gift that kept on giving. And that stock, you know, was at three bucks. This past year, I kept highlighting AMC and GameStop as short ideas. And guess what? AMC was doing secondary offerings. GameStop, they were selling additional shares, bringing in cash, probably smart by their 
by the CEO and those that are the decision makers because they knew as well as I did that their stock was way overvalued. So they said, hey, we might be able to make this business work if we get enough cash um, and sell stock while it's up here at way too high of prices. Look, maybe we can do something great with the cash and turn this whole thing around because the existing businesses are just not going to do it on their own, right? They're not worth those prices. And, and sure enough, the stocks kept plummeting to the downside over and over again. So secondary offerings do give me information. They, in often cases, they kind of tell me where to short and to be bearish and to highlight certain areas that I want to, that I want to continue to pick on to the downside. So why did I keep shorting AMC and GameStop and as bearish candidates? Or why did I pick on uh, Virgin Galactic back here? Again, secondary offerings, very bad sign for the future, for kind of the expectations of the business, the, how the business needs capital and so on, it can be kind of a place to pick on them. Now, I said that there are exceptions to the rule. Well, if you go back in Tesla, and I don't know when it did its last secondary, it's been a few years, but back in here, Tesla did secondary offerings for a number of times. But notice there's a very different picture. I mean, this was a stock that was booming and doing secondary offerings and they probably did a secondary somewhere in here and so on that was a different picture that was a different story that was in place whereas the stocks that were doing secondaries this year the AMC's and the GameStop's were in free fall and yet they still did some secondary offerings to raise capital and so forth now if they trade options this would be a bullish thesis, if you thought for some reason that one of these companies was going to go booming to the upside, there is the possibility that you could put on a near zero risk trade with options. Now, <clears throat> how would that work? Basically, the arbitrage would go like this. Long stock plus, let me clear this out, plus long put. And what is that synthetically? That is just owning stock plus a protective put. Synthetically, that's equivalent to a long call. It's the same trade. If you own stock plus a put, plus a long put, you're synthetically in a long call position. Now, we can't just go out and buy a long call because that's expensive, but we might be able to buy a put just prior to the secondary, get an allocation of stock at a nice discounted price. And the difference between those could be little to no risk. I have had situations where it's been zero risk, where I couldn't lose anything. Now, it doesn't guarantee success because just like a long call, which is what it synthetically acts like, it's synthetically equal to, if the stock keeps plummeting, you're just going to have the whole trade expire. Your put is going to exercise. It's going to same day substitute out your stock. You're going to break even or whatever you paid. You pay a small debit, you lose that small debit. Where it gets interesting is if for some reason the stock booms after the secondary. You know, imagine it has a Tesla type of response. Well, now all of a sudden you have a near zero risk trade, but you have infinite upside. It's like buying a long call that costs you next to nothing or maybe nothing. Maybe the worst you can do is break even and you have unlimited upside. So the way to do that, again, would be buying the put just before the pricing. And then if you can pick up the stock lower on that, that drop, that discount and that allocation that comes in lower, the math on it can be next to nothing. Um, a near zero risk position. Let's give a hypothetical. Let's say that AMC announced a secondary. Imagine you buy the stock today at nine at 393 per share. That's where it's trading, right? Or pardon me, I'm saying that wrong. We wouldn't buy the stock yet. We buy the, the four strike put today. And we buy that four strike put, it's in the money and so on and so forth. Let's say we buy it for 50 cents, okay? 
That's how much the put costs. Now, let me drag this out so we can see it better here. So we buy the put for 50 cents. This is, right now we have 50 cents of risk, but it's gonna price the IPO overnight, or the secondary, pardon me, overnight, and we think we can get an allocation at 360 per share, okay? This is all hypothetical and so on, but if this were to pan out and were to work out and we got our allocation, what would be our risk? As we said, it's synthetically equal to a long call, but in this case, our cost, our risk is 10 cents, $10. Our reward potential is unlimited, it's infinite. How does that math work out? If we buy the put today for 50 cents, we start with 50 cents of risk, but if we get allocated to the secondary and the stock at 360, we get to buy the stock at 360 and we have a guaranteed sell price locked in at four. If you have a guaranteed exit at four, worst case, and you paid 360 for the stock, you make 40 cents difference. Since you paid 50 cents for the put, your risk is only 10 cents in the trade. And if the stock could go back up following the secondary and go to $4, you're obviously in, in great shape in terms of anything above four, right? Your break even in this trade would be 410. Anything above $4.10 per share is unlimited upside. So imagine the stock goes to five bucks, you're up 90 cents. Imagine it goes to six bucks, you're up $1.90. It goes to seven bucks, you're up 290. It goes to eight bucks, you're up 390 and so on. You have infinite upside. Now, there is an expiration there is, there are realistic limitations and so on, but it's just kind of to give you a sense of how this would work, where if you are confident you could pick up the stock at a deep discount, you know, imagine you could get it at 350 and you bought the four strike put for 50 cents, you'd have zero risk and infinite upside. You wouldn't even have a break even because you, you're, you know, wherever it goes, you're at break even and your reward would be unlimited. It, but it would be unlimited above four. Stock would still have to go above four for you to make anything in the trade, but everything that goes up above $4 is gravy. It's just profit without risk. Again, something that's available, a possibility with secondary offerings that simply is not possible in regular trading. The stock would have to have options, You'd have to buy the put and there's no guarantee you're gonna get the allocation of the stock at the deep discount, but assuming you can, then that's how the trade would work out. So it's kind of a fun little exercise to go through. And it would also keep you from flipping the trade because now you've got that insured put for the next month or whatever, and you're able to ride that. So those are positions that I sometimes take. I would have to feel confident the stock had upside and. That certainly has not been the case in AMC. So I have not tried to play AMC to the upside. We have played that over and over again to the downside. Understanding who's doing secondary offerings, what their motivation is, it tells a piece of the story. It gives some really good information that might be highly val valuable towards you and towards trade ideas. And it certainly is an area that I focus on for shorting because it tells me that they're in trouble, they need cash, that, that they feel like their stock price is overvalued. A lot of information that comes from the companies that are aggressively pursuing secondary offering. All right, we'll leave it there. Thanks everyone for joining us for this class on secondary offerings. On behalf of Maverick Trading, I'm Corey Halliday. We'll see you next time. Goodbye everyone. <music>